Well, what's up guys? Welcome to an unexpectedly cloudless and windy episode because that's how New Mexico rolls apparently. So I wanted to come out here and do some time lapses, but no clouds. So we're gonna do something that is equally important that a lot of people have been asking me for. And that is, I'm gonna show you guys some of the uh, settings that I prefer for better photography with your S23 Ultra. And I just wanna preface this real quick with, these aren't settings that are like, if you like to take snapshots and stuff like that, um, these aren't settings to like help regular photos just instantly be better. These are more of my settings coming from a photographer's perspective, geared towards people who wanna give a little more intent to their photography. So let's just uh, jump right into it right now because it's cold and windy and camera lady is storming. So if I wanna make it out of here alive, I need to have this video done and food delivered like in the next 30 minutes. So let me get screen recording rolling here. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do uh, again, from a photographer standpoint, is when you get the phone, uh, by default, this is on, the scene optimizer, this is on. I like to turn that off because any time that I want to take control or use pro mode or... or it makes your snapshots look like shit too. Yeah, as Camera Lady just pointed out, it. I know it's well-meaning, it's in, an, in its intent because the phone and Samsung, they don't know what you want to take a picture of and they don't know what's where you're at or what you're doing or what the scene looks like. So it's just using AI to try to optimize everything, which basically means it's going to HDR, oversaturate, over contrast, over sharp. It's, it's going to exaggerate like all of those. And I just, that's not me. So I turn that off. Even when I just shoot in JPEG with this off, to me personally, it's better. So that's subjective, but that's my first suggestion if you want a little more intent and effort put into your photos maybe try turning that off that way you can control how they look the next thing that i do is i come down here to shooting methods and i go ahead and turn the voice commands on I, there's a ton of different ways you can do it with the self timers and with the s pen and the gestures and all that but i still prefer the simple voice commands all right so the next thing let's come back up here this is the next most important thing for me I wanna come down here to advanced picture options. And by default, this is set to JPEG. So I wanna go ahead and set it to raw and JPEG. Traditionally, this is the first, uh, the S23 Ultra, I believe, or this new update or whatever, is the first time I've seen that they let you do raw only. It used to always only be, if you wanted raw, it's raw and JPEG. But I'm gonna talk about why I like raw and JPEG together instead of just raw. Uh, but first, let's just go ahead and turn that on. All right, so this is going to tie in with the next few things that I want to talk about, and that's the resolution and the uh, ratio. So if we come up here, we can see that we are in 3-4. So I like to keep it in 3-4 because 3-4 is the ratio that is the full width, of, the full sensor, basically. The sensor size, the sensor size that's on your lenses is 3 to 4. So any of these other ones, 9 by 16, even full, a lot of people ask me about this. Now you can see on my screen that it's showing the full uh, screen as the photo. That's actually a crop from the 3 4 ratio sensor. So again, I would rather crop it in post unless you need that specific crop and you want to see the framing. I leave it in 3 4. Now, to go along with that, this is again a new addition with the S23 Ultra. We have we have the 50 megapixel and we have the 200 megapixel, both only in 3.4. Again, that's because it's the full width of the sensor. So it's the full sensor size. Um, there are some caveats with the 50 and the 200 megapixels. And I'm just, let's, let's talk about that for a second. So if you haven't seen my other, I did the landscape uh, photography with the S23 Ultra. In the landscape one, I, I used the 200 and the 50 and I talked about that, but I'm gonna briefly go over this real quick if you haven't seen that. So if we come up here and we go into, this is in the regular photo app, you can see that we have these options, but if I wanna to go to pro mode uh, and, and have control over my shutter speed and my ISO, which is really high because the last thing I was doing was Astro apparently, um, but let's just change that. there so now we have something like if I just wanted to take control of this in pro mode and and you know 
control my settings, do whatever, and then have the raw because the raw is only in the, the pro mode here. Um, you'll notice that I no longer, when I click up here, I no longer have the 200 megapixel. Uh, it's not gonna give you that option. The best you're gonna get is this 50 megapixel, which is still binned, but it's not binned as much as the JPEG version. You'll notice that we only have the 50 megapixel here in pro mode, and that's gonna give you more detail than the 12 megapixel, of course, uh, but not as much as the 200. So that's one of the caveats. The other caveat is, You'll, whether you're in pro mode or the regular JPEG mode, you will notice that when I tap this, the only thing I have there is the W right there in the, the bottom middle. That's my wide angle lens. That's the regular, the main sensor because the, the 50 and the 200 megapixels are only available on the main sensor. So if we come out of here and go to regular photo mode and then we go to the regular three by four, so now you'll see we have the 0.6, we have the super wide, we have the 1x, the 3x, the 10x, there's Western New Mexico University, and all of the other options, right? Well, if we go in here to the 50 megapixel, now we only have 1x. And if we go in here to the 200 megapixel, now we only have 1x. So if you crop, it, if you zoom into this, this is a digital crop. Um, I advise as a photographer from a photography standpoint, don't do this unless you really need to <laughs> because it's just not going to be better than coming back here to your regular 3-4 and zooming in and using one of the native telephoto lenses. So that, that right there is gonna give me a better result than cropping into the 200. So those are my reasons for me not wanting to use the 200 and the 50 as much, because again, from a photographer's standpoint, I would rather have more lens options most of the time than just straight up more IQ, because more resolution isn't always, you know, resolution is overhyped anyways in the photography community, um, but that's just my hot take. I would rather have the choice of my focal length natively without having to do any digital cropping or anything like that. And maybe if I know what I want and I am going to use the regular main lens, then I'll go ahead and throw it in the 50 or the 200. The 200. Also, um, you need a lot of light for the 200. Like this, there's no clouds. There's, uh, this is New Mexico sunlight, but it's going down. So, I would even say that like, you know, you start getting towards sunset or just after sunrise or whatever, like you need a lot of light for that 200 to be effective and to not lose blurriness. If you wanna see more on that, go see the landscape photography episode that I did where the 200 wasn't looking so hot once the light started going down. All right, last thing, let's talk about pro mode real quick. So this is, um, one of my favorite things that Samsung has implemented, and that is the pro mode, of course, so we can go in here and we can click on pro mode. And basically all that means is that they, they give you control of all of your settings. So you can bump up your ISO and increase that sensitivity. We can come in here and change our shutter speed. We can change our focus point. We can change our white balance and all of that stuff. So I love pro mode. I, I think it gives people access and really helps them learn photography. And even just, you know, having the control, it's great. I've shot a lot of really cool images uh, over the years with pro mode. And I'm just very happy that it's there. And with every iteration, it seems to get better. But here's what I like, going back to the why I switched to RAW and JPEG. So I, I want the control and I don't like the sharpening and the contrast and all of that that Samsung bakes into their JPEGs when you take a regular shot. But sometimes, you know, I've got a kid and I've got a, I've got a family, I've got a cat, I've got, you know, travels, I've got all these random things I wanna take pictures of that don't require pro mode. But what I've done for most photography is that putting it in pro mode and then coming in here to each one of these and clicking auto and then going into your speed and clicking auto. So this will basically effectively let the camera decide, you know, the when I'm looking at this screen here, you know, everything's looking really nice. That's actually not too bad of a shot right there, this cactus and the, the mountains and everything. 
Um, basically, like as I'm moving around, there's camera lady freezing. It's doing a, <laughs> it's doing a really good job of just the regular auto exposure for me but I get the added benefit of now being in pro mode and I can have that JPEG if I just need to text a shot to somebody real quick or, you know, whatever. But then if I want to play with it and actually put some effort into editing or whatever, then I've got the raw there and I don't mind that. Um, it is going to take up more space, of course, on your phone, but that's not a big deal to me. So that's why I like the RAW plus JPEG, and that's what I like about Pro Mode, is that being able to just put it in auto for the times that you wanna just take those snapshots, and if you decide you wanna edit them, the RAW version is gonna come out looking a lot less processed, and you're gonna have a lot more control over that editing than you will a JPEG. So let's talk about the last bonus thing, and that is editing. So that's a tip for not just the S23 Ultra, but for any phone. I think editing is like, kind of scary to beginners and it's just overlooked by a lot of people but these days you know programs like Snapseed, Lightroom Mobile, Photoshop, whatever programs you're using whether it's on your phone or your computer they make it super easy uh, to start trying whether e even if it's just with a preset or you know whatever being able the more you learn how to edit the better you'll become at knowing what you need to photograph and and what you can get away with and what you need, you know, settings wise to, to get the desired image that you're looking for. And editing really helps with that. So whether it's just a simple Snapseed edit or a super take it to your computer, deep dive into Photoshop, like I've done with my Astro stuff or my other landscape stuff, um, even with the phone things, you know, don't forget about editing. It's super important that's kind of the whole point of having the pro mode and the, the being able to do the raws and all of that is because you're going to want to put your own stamp on that image and make it look how you want and not let samsung's algorithms control a crust jpeg for you so that's the whole thing and then the last thing is just get out there and shoot shoot as much as possible the more the more photography with intent you do the better your photography is going to get over time so I'm going to wrap it up here. Our hands are completely frozen. It is dinner time. Leave those questions. If you have any questions about any of this stuff that I went over down there in the comments below, and I will definitely answer them. I will be doing a separate video completely about pro mode, like on my, all my other series of phones. So if you want to check out, if you want to learn pro mode and don't want to wait, go check out my like s21 or whatever the pro mode videos, but I will definitely be doing a full pro mode tutorial on the S23 Ultra and that will be coming soon. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I super appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment down below, hit that like button for me because that's the best thing you can do for my channel. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next episode.